Hello everyone. Welcome to today's session. Hello everyone. I hope I am audible. Okay. Yes. So uh, we are continuing with the UPSC CSC series, uh, Current Affairs, 25 MCQs. And today we are looking into the month of May 2021. All right. So yesterday, uh, due to certain you know uh, sound disturbances and all, we could not continue with the class. So I'll be taking up from the first question itself today. All right. I have deleted yesterday's video because it's only very you know uh, we only covered up to two three questions and we had to pause there. So I will be taking right from the beginning. Uh, so to the new joinees, this is how it works. I will show you the question. I will give you some thirty seconds uh, to put your answers in the YouTube live chat. And uh, afterwards, uh, I will go on to explain the answer. All right. So this is a one hour session. We will finish up by 6 p.m. Uh, there are 25 questions from the current affairs of month, uh, May 2021. All right. So after this, the day after tomorrow, we will start with the ancient India series and, you know, mm, the last portion from history. Okay. So let's begin. Uh, welcome to Madhav Shankar Varya classes. I am Madhav Shankar Varya. Uh, if you have not already subscribed to this channel, please do subscribe and uh, share with your friends also so they can also benefit from it. Okay, so the first question is a question that is based on history. We are celebrating the X anniversary of a very famous battle, Battle of Haldighati. So consider the following statements about Maharana Pratap, the 13th Rajput king of Mewar. Statement number one. Battle of Haldighati was fought in 1576 between Maharana and the forces of Akbar led by Raja Birbal. 2. Shivaji's methods of sporadic warfare was adopted by Rana in his battles against the Mughal Empire. Select the correct statements using the codes given below. Good evening Satya, welcome to the class. So some of you have already you know, been uh, in yesterday's class at the beginning. So even if you have already you know, answered and know the answer, just put it again, it's fine. Make it as interactive as possible. So we are observing the anniversary, X anniversary of the Battle of Haldighati. So which of these statements is or are correct? You have 20 seconds to give me the answer. I request all of you to actively participate and put your answers in YouTube live chat. All right. So let's see. So this is a question that is based on history. And if you have been in my medieval Indian classes, you will definitely get the answer to this one. Hands down. Very easy question. Yes. So correct answer to first question is option D. Sona Saji and uh, Satya Pandey both getting it right. Okay, correct answer indeed option D. Why? Because Battle of Haldighati was indeed fought between Maharana Pratap and the forces of Akbar, except his forces were not led by Raja Birbal. It is actually led by Raja Mansingh of Amber. Okay, Raja Birbal led the forces towards Afghanistan region to clear off the Khyber Pass and all and uh, Raja Birbal died in that very famous battle. All right. Second statement is incorrect. Why? Because all of them, you know, Shivaji, Rana Pratap, uh, you know, even Malik Ambar, all of them had resorted to this sporadic warfare, except it is not Shivaji's methods which Rana Pratap adopted. It is Rana Pratap's methods which Shivaji adopted. This it, it, It's just the, you know, I have just shuffled the timeline. That's all. Rana Pratap was a contemporary of Akbar and Shivaji is a contemporary of Aurangzeb. So three generations later only Shivaji will come. So Rana Pratap cannot adopt something from Shivaji. Okay, it's implausible. So statement two is also incorrect. It should, it should have been the other way around. That's all. So correct answer, neither of the above, option D. Second question, consider the following statements. Statement number one, appointment of the chief secretary of a state is done by the president of India. Statement number two, the chief secretary of a state has a fixed tenure of five years. Select the correct statements using the codes given below. So a very simple question, why is it in the news? Because of the recent controversies that happened in West Bengal and all. Okay, I mean, the West Bengal chief secretary has been called back and there has been lots of you know, issues between sender and the government of West Bengal. Okay, so uh, chiefs, the topic of chief secretary is very important. Yeah, okay. Second answer is also, we have discussed this uh, yesterday, if you have not seen. Uh, correct answer is option D. So basically, appointment of a chief secretary is done by the governor, not the president of India. Governor, I mean, it's 
we can say that you know selection and you know recommendation everything is made by the chief minister so it is actually the chief minister who appoints him only problem is appointment of a chief secretary is a executive action and every executive action in a state is done in the name of governor clear chief minister does everything we know that but everything that the government does is actually in the name of the governor just like everything that the prime minister and the central council of ministers do is actually in the name of the president of india okay so here the correct answer is it is the governor who appoints the chief secretary second one chief secretary of the state has a fixed tenure no all right he does not have a fixed tenure at all there has been certain recommendations from the you know uh, administrative reforms commission way back saying that chief secretary should have a tenure of 3 to 4 years but it has never happened and uh, currently there is no tenure for the post of chief secretary so both the statements are incorrect usually the state government goes by appointing the senior most ias officer of that state that's how usually it's done uh, but you know uh, there is no fixed tenure anyway correct answer is option d third question consider the following statements about the national securities act nsa of 1980 Number one, the maximum period for which one may be detained, according to NSA, is twelve months. That is one year. Two, under the National Securities Act, the arrested person is not entitled to the aid of any legal practitioner in any matter connected with the proceedings before an advisory board. Select the correct statements. Third question, National Securities Act. again very well very much in the news because of you know all the things that has been happening okay uapa nsa and all these sedition act all these are very much in the news very recently as in the case of lakshadweep there has been certain sedition charge charged, charged against certain personalities and it is all over the news so be you know alert about all these very uh, crucial laws many people call all these laws as very draconian because of the nature of the law but it is there for a reason so deepika welcome correct answer to third question is option c okay we have discussed up to fourth question yesterday so uh, this is the third one correct answer is option c only both are correct so according to the national securities act a person can be detained uh, for a maximum period of 12 months okay not in a in a one go okay i mean uh, if you are detaining a person you can't straight away detain him for one year uh, initially it is for a period of 3 months and then it gets extended and extended you know and overall the maximum term you can detain a person according to the nsa is 12 months clear second one is also correct under the nsa the arrested person has no right to have a legal practitioner okay he cannot have a legal practitioner when he goes before the advisory board advisory board is the board constituted by the central government to look into this case so that board decides you know how to proceed so when this person is represented in front of this board he does not have he or she does not have uh, the right to have the aid of a legal practitioner clear also if someone is arrested according to this or sorry detained according to this act then that person Uh, have no rights to know why he is he or she is arrested up to a period of maximum 10 days the authorities can keep him in the dark for a period of 10 years he they do not have to tell him why he or she is being arrested at all clear so overall a very draconian act national securities act of 1980 but then again uh, very i mean it has its own purposes and you know uses so plenty of arguments for both sides national security versus rights of a person okay so uh, when you study all these things study in the mains perspective also question number 4 rupsi airport recently seen in the news is located in which of the following states or union territories okay very famous airport that has been in the news recently rupsi option a jharkhand option b lakshadweep option c assam option d sikkim I think this is a fairly easy question, and you can answer this. Uh, yeah, fourth question. We, I think we looked into this one also.
Correct answer. Yes, option C, Assam. All right. So if you know this, you know, place Rupsi is in Assam, it's a direct question. Nothing much here. The reason why it is in the news is because this is the Assam's seventh airport and the 15th airport in Northeastern India. Okay. Also, this airport was built for warplanes in 1939 during the Second World War. And when it was built during that time, this was one of the biggest airports in South Asia, which was used by the Allied forces to supply forces for Burma, China, etc. for the war. Okay. And recently, under the Udan scheme, government has, you know, uh, revived this airport. That is why this is in the news. Rupsi Airport situated in the state of Assam. Okay, so fifth question, we did not discuss this yesterday. So from here onwards, we will take it a bit slow. Consider the following statements about the 17 plus 1 initiative. Statement number 1. It is the official cooperation between USA and the Central and East Eastern European countries to promote business and investment relations. 2. This format was founded in 2012 in Budapest. Select the correct statements using the codes given below. All right, question number five, 17 plus one initiative. Let's see how many of you knows about this initiative. You have about 20 to 30 seconds to answer. See if you can get this. All right, Deepika is saying it is B, five. All right, anyone else? Satya also going with B. So, yep, correct. B only. Why? Because 17 plus 1 initiative is actually an initiative uh, of official cooperation between China and the Eastern European countries to promote business and investment relations. It's not USA. It is China and Central and East European countries. Second one is correct. This format was founded in the year 2012 in Budapest. All right. And why is it in the news? It is in the news because Recently, Lithuania quit the 17 plus 1 initiative forum, calling it a very decisive forum. All right, Lithuania, which was a part of this, actually quit from this because of China, you know, accusing this forum of being very divisive and China being, you know, playing the divisive card. And that is why it came into the news. So you have to, you know, see it in the perspective of the OBOR and all, you know, one belt, one road uh, initiative by China and 17 plus 1, etc, etc. China trying to play the dominant role throughout the world. Uh, so in that context, try to see it. Okay, after the COVID and you know, all the accusations that China had faced regarding that, how is the world situation now? How, what is the perspective of different powers, including US, Europe, Australia, India, etc, etc, towards China? Okay, all these are very important for your international relations topics. Question 6. Consider the following statements about aerosols. A question from your science, okay, science and technology. Statement number one. An aerosol is a suspension of fine solid particles or liquid droplets in air or another gas. Two, aerosols are capable of scattering sunlight but are not able to absorb it. Select the correct statements using the codes given below. Aerosols, again, I mean, I think you know what an aerosol is. For example, an example of an aerosol would be your, you know, certain kind of sprays. Okay, you sometimes use the disinfectant sprays and all. All those are aerosols, all those constitute aerosols. So, which of the given statements is or are correct regarding aerosols? Okay, Deepika saying it is A, one only. Fine. Anyone else? Once I get a couple of answers, I will move on. Okay. All right. No one. Sixth question. Correct answer is very good. Deepika. It is option A. One only. So basically, Aerosol is a suspension of fine solid particles or liquid droplets. It can either be solid or liquid, but it is actually suspended in air 
or maybe in another gas okay and it's you know uh, aerosols are responsible for a wide variety of things so first statement is basically correct it is a very basic definition of an aerosol second one aerosols are capable of scattering sunlight but are not able to absorb it some of the aerosols are capable of you know scattering sunlight and are not able to absorb it but there are other aerosols which are capable of absorbing it as well so we can't say this statement is true because there are many exceptions to it so here aerosol particles such as you know black carbon brown carbon these are actually capable of both scattering and absorbing light from the sun okay so there are some that do it and some that do not do it so when we make a generalized statement it's not true so statement 2 is incorrect correct answer is option a one only question 7 consider the following statements about the midday meal scheme statement number 1 it guarantees one meal to all children in government and aided schools and madrasas supported under samagra shiksha 2 it comes under the ministry of social justice select the correct statements using the codes given below question number 7 regarding the midday meal scheme again in the news why because in you know because the schools are not working these days government in many states have decided that rather than giving the midday meal as such instead you know uh, uh, the items and all will be provided to the ch uh, children's home mm, like just like the you know ration shops and all so many state governments took such decisions recently it has been all over the paper so what is the answer seventh question all right so ona saying a deepika saying d and the correct answer is yeah sona and satya getting it option a one only first statement is correct it guarantees one meal to all children in government aided and madrasas three three categories are involved there the government schools are there aided schools are there and madrasas also are included in midday meal scheme and it is covered under the samagra shiksha abhiyan so first statement is true second is wrong why because it is not ministry of social justice it is the ministry of education earlier known as mhrd but recently renamed as ministry of education so first second statement is incorrect all right and it was launched in the year 1995 as national program of nutritional support to primary education which was a centrally sponsored scheme okay so statement number 1 is true second is wrong correct answer is option a question 8 another question that has a historic basis consider the following statements about gopal krishna gokhale number 1 gokhale published a daily newspaper entitled gnana prakash Two, he served as secretary of the Deccan Education Society. Number three, Gokhale was a mentor to both Muhammad Jinnah and Mahatma Gandhi. Select the correct statements. All right, Gopal Krishna Gokhale, very famous for establishing the Servants of India Society, one of the moderate leaders in the early days of Congress. but let's see how many of you get this question number 8 a bit tricky question in the sense that i mean uh, if you have read spectrum you will definitely get this you have 20 seconds okay nobody is even trying come on try to make intelligent guesses Okay, Deepika is saying it is B, one and three. So now going with A, and what is the correct answer? Correct answer is D, all the above. Okay, so we all know that Gokhale was a mentor of Mahatma Gandhi. Okay, I mean Mahatma Gandhi has even written a book called as Gokhale, my political guru. So that that that's true. That is obvious. I mean, if you have read Spectrum, you would also know the first two statements. But otherwise, 
for an extra information, Gokhale was also a mentor to Mohammad Jinnah in the early days. So statement 3 is correct. He served as a secretary of Deccan Education Society. Correct. Gokhale published the newspaper entitled Gyan Prakash. Everything is correct. Alright, some extra info is also given here. He was later elected to the Council of India of the Governor General of India in 1903. He was appointed as its companion of the Order of the Indian Empire in 1904, New York's Honor List. And in 1905, he founded the very famous Servants of India Society. Okay, so these are very, you know, absolute facts. So, I mean, it's not logical or anything, but uh, so try to remember all these points. It's all there in your Spectrum book. Okay, question nine. All right, you have to identify a personality. Sometimes UPSC asks these kinds of questions also. In the previous year's question paper, there was a question showing Ashoka's edict. And you were asked to identify which emperor does this edict belong to. There were options like, you know, Ashoka, Chandragupta, etc, etc. And the correct answer was Ashoka. Sometimes they give some clues about certain wildlife sanctuaries and you are, you are asked to identify the sanctuary. So here is one such question. He championed atheism and rationality and also disapproved orthodox Hindu belief. In fact, he even dismissed cow worship as superstitious. He also worked on abolishment of untouchability in Ratnagiri. Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar also compared his work to Lord Buddha. Identify the personality. Option A, Bal Ganga Tilak. Option B, Arabindo. Option C, Atmaram Pandurang. Option D, V. D. Savakar. Question number nine. <clears throat> Try to read each of these statements and see if you can guess the person from any of it. Not that easy, but you will come to it. Okay, I got two answers and both of them very good. Satya Deepika, correct answer. The Veer Savakar is the correct answer, okay. Vinayak Savakar, Vinayak Damodar Savakar or VD Savakar. He was the president of the Hindu Mahasabha from 1937 to 43. And in Pune, Savakar founded the very famous Abhinava Bharat Society. And Vinayak Savakar and Ganesh Savakar started the very famous Mitra Mela, a revolutionary secret society in Nasik in the year 1899. And he has been in the news for a pretty long time. Recently in the news because our uh, Prime Minister has, uh, you know, uh, paid respects to him du during his anniversary, birth anniversary. Okay. So anyway, correct answer to this is Vinayak Damodar Savakar. Question 10. Hutu and Tutsi communities are seen in which among the following nations? Hutu and Tutsi communities. Option A, Nigeria. Option B, Philippines. Option C, Nicaragua. Option D, none of the above. Hutu and Tutsi, very famous tribes. All over the news for very long time. There is a very famous movie regarding these two tribes also. Okay, Satya is saying it is D, none of the above. If it is D, then what is the correct answer? Satya? If you are giving the answer none of the above, then you have to tell me what is the correct answer also. Yeah, okay. Correct answer is none of the above. It is Rwanda. Very good. So Rwanda is a landlocked country in Central Africa with its capital at Kigali. So Kigali is also very important because of certain environmental summits has happened there. Anyway, Rwanda is the country where this Hutu and Tutsi communities can be seen and the majority population is Hutu and the minority population is Tutsi. Why is it in the news? Because these Hutu and Tutsi tribes are always you know warring each other and there has been plenty of genocides even okay committed again committed by the majority side to the minority side and uh, recently French president had actually uh, you know came out and apologized uh, on behalf of France for France, you know, maybe uh, helping or say uh, being sided with Hutu during these atrocities. Okay, this happened back in the 1990s and it is very recently that the French president came out and apologized for France, French's role in this 
uh, uh, you know, in famous incidents. So correct answer, uh, Rwanda and the movie name is Hotel Rwanda, okay, which shows all these things. Question 11, consider the following statements about Iravati dolphins. Number one, sorry, uh, it's not Iravati dolphins. I forgot to change the question. Consider the following statements, okay. Number one, sun's halo is a 22 degree ring that appears due to the dispersion of light causing halo to have colors. Two, lunar halos are mostly colorless. Select the correct statements. Okay, this is a question on, let's say, uh, again from current affairs. Because sun's halo was visible very recently in Bangalore. Okay, many people photographed it and it was all over the newspaper. There was a beautiful photograph also. I think you have seen it. Okay, I mean, if you photograph it, you will see the sun here and there will be a halo, a circle, which looks like a, you know, which has, it, is, which, it has all the colors and all. That is why it works in the news. 11C. So, now saying it is C. Anyone else? Deepika also saying it is C. Correct answer is indeed C. Very good. So, I think all of you have seen this photograph in the newspaper. So, sun's halo is a 22 degree ring that appears due to the dispersion of light. Okay, I mean, in higher altitudes, uh, ice crystals are formed. Okay, in the, you know, especially in the upper levels of cirrus clouds. And when these ice crystals align in a particular position, this very uh, famous incident known as sun's halo is formed. And it has very beautiful colors because of the, you know, sunlight being dispersed uh, by these ice crystals. Second one is also correct. Lunar halos are mostly colorless. Why? Because the light from the moon is not that powerful. That's it. It is not bright enough to create a colorful shell, a colorful halo. Okay, so both the statements are correct. Answer is option C. Question 12. All right, consider the following statements about 1992 Indira Sahani judgment. One of the most famous search, uh, judgment of the Supreme Court of India. Indira Sahani judgment. Number one, it said that the criteria for a group to qualify for reservation is social and economical backwardness. Two, it reiterated the 50% limit to vertical quotas unless in exceptional circumstances. Select the correct statements using the quotes given below. Twelfth question. Indira Sahani judgment, I think all of you have heard about this one. You have, I mean, along with your answers, please tell me that there is a very famous commission which is associated with Indira Sahani judgment. What is the name of that commission? That also you have to tell me. Okay, Deepika is saying it is A, one only. You have to tell me the name of the very famous commission which is associated with Indira Sahani. Yeah, uh, Satya, very good. It is the Mandal Commission. And what is your answer? Okay, Deepika also very good. Correct answer, it is the Mandal Commission. Very famous commission that deals with, the, I mean, that brought the guidelines for reservation and you know, all these things. It was questioned in the court and uh, you know, in the end, the very famous judgment, Indira Sani judgment. It is in the news because of the recent EWS event, also because of the recent Maratha reservation. Maharashtra government brought in this Maratha reservation for the Marathas, the Maratha community. So it was again, uh, this judgment was in the news because of all these things. So the correct answer is option B, two only. All right. In the Indira Science judgment, it said that the criteria for a group to qualify for a reservation is social and educational backwardness, not economical backwardness. If this judgment had said economical backwardness, then EWS should not even be questioned. EWS is for economically weaker sections. So if such reservations are already allowed by law, I mean, then what's the need for all this tantrum? Okay. Okay. So Indian constitution, as well as this judgment gives reservation. Uh, I mean, this judgment gives reservation for social and educational backwardness only, not economical backwardness. So first statement is incorrect. Second is true. 
maximum reservation is limited to 50% except on very exceptional circumstances where it could be given uh, with the, to a higher percentage. All right. So correct answer is option B. So Mandal Commission is the very famous commission that deals with reservation systems in India. Question 13. Consider the following statements about the appointment of CBI director, okay, Central Bureau of <laughs> Investigation. Statement number one says that the director of the CBI is appointed as per section 4A of the Delhi Special Police Establishment Act of 1946. Two, according to Lokpal and Lokayuktas Act 2013, the central government shall appoint the director of CBI on the recommendation of a three member committee, including the prime minister, the home minister and the chairman of UPSC. Select the correct statements using the quotes given below. Again, I think uh, I need not explain why this question is asked because recently there has been, uh, you know, this panel has been brought in and CBI director recruitment happened. I mean, not recruitment, uh, selection, okay, happened and a particular person was appointed as CBA director. So how is that process? That is the question. What, what is the process? Many states send, you know, uh, their D uh, nominations, uh, you know, their D DGPs as nominations to the panel, but ultimately uh, one particular person was selected. So. Okay, 13 A, A. Okay, Deepika and Satya is saying it is A. Very good answer. It is indeed A. So, CBI is actually established according to the Delhi Special Police Establishment Act. So, the appointment of the director is also as per one of the sections in this act. So, that is true. I mean, you need not study the exact section number and all. But otherwise, I mean, in general, you have to understand CBI is in accord, works in accordance with the DPSP Act. Okay, uh, sorry, uh, DSP Act, so that is true. Second one, according to the Lokpal and Lokayatas Act, the central government shall appoint the CBI director on recommendation of a three-member committee. Up to here, this is true. So, who are the personalities that constitute this three-member committee? Prime Minister is obviously there, so uh, there is no doubt there. Then, who are the other personalities? It is not the Home Minister and the Chairman of UPSC. It is... Chief Justice of India or a Judge of Supreme Court nominated by the Chief Justice and the Leader of Opposition or the Leader of the Largest Opposition Party in the Lok Sabha. Okay, so uh, very, until very recently, uh, there has been huge issues regarding CBI Director appointment. Why? Because there was no Leader of Opposition in Lok Sabha. Okay, if a party has to be recognized as an opposition party in the Lok Sabha, there has there is certain criteria. And I mean, you have to have X number of seats to achieve that. I think you all know that. I'm not going to that area. Then I will have to explain a lot more. So I'm not going there. I'm sticking with the question. And, and in the Lok Sabha, there is no party that actually qualifies to have that tag of leader of, opposi or, uh, of opposition party. Okay, so this recruitment or this appointment has been facing lots of criticism. I mean, it has been stuck for a very long time. So recently, there has been certain amendments made into this section of DSPE Act, changing leader of opposition into leader of the largest party in the opposition in Lok Sabha. So from uh, International Congress, the leader of the INC in Lok Sabha has been taken as the member. Okay, so the correct answer is option A, one only. Question 14. Cloud seeding is an artificial way to induce moisture in the clouds so as to cause a rainfall. Which of these compounds is not used in this process? Very careful. Which of these compounds is not used in the process of cloud seeding? Option A, silver iodide. Option B, dry ice. Option C, potassium nitrite. Option D, sodium chloride. Yes, Satya, correct. 10% of the total strength of the house is the number of seats required to form the opposition. And there no party had that uh, that many seats in Lok Sabha. Okay. I mean, B, uh, BJP had huge wins both in 2014 and 2019. So, 
there was no leader of the opposition for a very long time and hence there has been you know these modifications which were brought into the said act for the appointment of cbi director so uh, question number 14 i got to answer deepika saying it is d satya saying it is d wrong both of you correct answer is option c potassium nitrate all right so uh, silver iodide uh, obviously is there dry ice is obviously there so these two are very common we know it sodium chloride potassium nitrate okay sodium chloride is also used okay nacl uh, common salt it is also used as a cloud seeding agent some other agents are also there uh, you know like liquefied gases liquid nitrogen exam for example okay and the problem with cloud seeding is that it may not be 100% successful because you know it can cause rains in not the intentional area i mean once the cloud is seeded you can't specifically predict where it would rain it would it will rain but where it will rain you are not you may not be so sure okay so you may not get rain in the intentional region so a lot of studies and you know uh, etc are uh, happening in this particular field and various state governments have used this process to bring artificial rain especially in very hot and humid uh, areas correct answer is option c potassium nitrate is not one of those cloud seeding agents question 15 consider the following statements about venus okay uh, number 1 it is the second hottest planet in the solar system two venus rotates in the direction opposite of its orbital path around the sun select the correct statements we have 10 more questions after this this session will end uh, at 6 pm so this is a question from geography i mean we can pair it with science and technology also because it appeared in that portion in newspaper let's see deepika saying it is b sona saying it is b so i got a couple of answers for moving on correct answer very good both of you it is indeed b venus is actually the hottest planet in the solar system it is not the second hottest so logic dictates that mercury is the planet closest to the sun so normally we would think mercury should be the hottest planet but it is actually venus which is hottest why because at the atmosphere of venus has uh, greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide and all. all right so once the sun's rays hit it 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 won't escape as fast as in mercury and it will keep venus very very warm clear okay? so venus is actually the hottest planet in the solar system despite its distance from sun compared to mercury okay so first statement is wrong second one venus rotates in the direction opposite of its orbital path around the sun yes two planets does this one is venus and other is uranus these two have this particular backward rotation okay so statement 2 is correct one is wrong so answer is option b question 16 i think i have asked this question before i am not so sure but uh, anyway let's see if you remember the answer who among the following heads the national crisis management committee ncmc is headed by who among the following personalities option a prime minister option b national security adviser option c cabinet secretary option d home minister national crisis management committee i think i have asked national disaster management agency but i think i have asked this one also so i'm not so sure let's see how many gets this anyway 16 cc okay okay any anyway, so i have asked it okay very good it is indeed the cabinet secretary who heads national crisis management authority so, sorry crisis management committee and the other members of this include secretaries of all concerned ministries and departments as well as organizations which deals with you know crisis management in india so it's a multi sectoral body headed by the senior most ias officer of the country or you can say the cabinet secretary all right so correct answer option c question 17 Which among the following best describes the term A76 recently seen in the news? 
Option A, it is a comet. B, it is an iceberg. C, it is an asteroid. D, it is a virus. So what exactly is A76? Comet, iceberg, asteroid, virus. All right, 17th question. B, B. Everybody going with the option B. Okay, looks like you people have studied current affairs very well. Okay, that's re really good answering today. No, I mean, correct answer it is Indian iceberg. All right, so a very huge block of ice named as A76 was broken off from the Western Antarctica into the Vandal Sea. Okay, into the Vandal Sea, this iceberg has broken off and it became the largest iceberg in the world. All right, and this has been monitored by the scientists for a long time and it began separation from the Rhone ice cell, which is actually located in Western Antarctica. So correct answer, it is indeed option B. All right, question 18. Question from your ecology portion, environment and ecology. Consider the following statements about Indian pangolin. Number one, it is a nocturnal and sorry, it is nocturnal and rests in deep burrows during the day. Two, the color of its scales varies depending on the color of the earth in its surroundings. Three, it is classified as vulnerable under IUCN red list. Select the correct statements. Indian pangolin. Satya quickly going with option A, Deepika going with option C. So yes, correct answer, very good. It is option A, Satya got it. So very simple because it's not vulnerable, it is endangered. All right, Indian pangolin is an endangered species. Again, read the uh, you know, animals and plants from India which are in the endangered and critically endangered lists of IUCN and there it is listed Indian pangolin also. Okay, so first and second statements are correct. It is indeed nocturnal and it can change the color of the scale according to the color of the earth in its surroundings. Okay, and it is an insectivore. It is basically what is a pangolin? It is an anteater. Okay, it feeds on ants and termites. Alright, so correct answer is option A. It is in the news because there has been a lot of hunting and poaching of Indian pangolin for its meat. Okay, its meat is very, you know, highly valuable thing in the markets and all. And uh, because of the huge hunting that has been going on, this species has become endangered and now it is under protection. Correct answer is option A. 19th question. Okay, this is a very common thing that you read in the newspapers every day. Consider the following statements about serological surveys. Number one, serological surveys are usually used to quantify the proportion of people or animals in a population positive for a specific pathogen. Two, antibodies are measured from the blood samples from participants to check past exposure of the virus. Select the correct statements. 19th question, serological surveys. During the COVID city, you know, pandemic, this was in the news like every day. Okay, even now this comes very occasionally, but a month ago, this term is always there in newspapers. Okay, serological survey. And there was actually a, you know, section in the Hindu newspaper, a full detailed page regarding how or what is serological survey and how it is done, what are its merits, what are its demerits, so and so. So what is the answer? 19A. Okay, Satya Pandey is saying it is A. Deepika is saying it is B. Anyone else? I got two answers. So correct answer to 19th question is it is C. Both are true. Serological surveys are actually used to quantify the proportion of the people or animals in a population positive for a specific pathogen. So there are a huge lot of demerits for this particular survey. We will come, I mean, 
to that later. But anyway, in layman's terms, first statement is true. I mean, this is the intention of the serological survey to quantify the proportion of people. So if you can quantify the proportion of the people or animals in that population, which has been exposed or you know, positive for this pathogen, then you can have an idea about something known as herd immunity. I hope you know what this is. Herd immunity means if X percentage of the population gets exposed or you know gets vaccinated uh, against a virus or any other pathogen, then after you know uh, this community altogether develops some uh, develops a resistance towards further spread of that particular pathogen. Okay, the percentage varies for different viruses or different pathogens. It's different. Okay, so once herd immunity is achieved, then the transmission of this particular uh, pathogen will reduce drastically and eventually it will come to zero. All right, so for COVID also, scientists are you know finding out what is exactly the percentage of population that needs to be immunized through natural process or through vaccination to achieve this herd immunity. Second statement is also correct. Antibodies are measured in, uh, in these surveys from blood samples from participants to check past exposure. Okay, we don't do the RT-PCR tests in order to find uh, or in order for the serological surveys. We do the antibody test to look for previous exposures. So correct answer, both statements, answer C. 20th question. Consider the following statements about Kabasura Kudinir. Number one, it is a medicinal water formulation developed by Neri along with the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. Two, it includes ingredients such as ginger, clove, kadukai, ashwain and other herbs. Select the correct statements. Yeah, so now I got 19th one correct. 20th question. Kabasura Kudinir. Again, in the news very recently, which of these statements is or are correct? Deepika going with C. Others? Anyone? All right, so I think I'll explain. Correct answer is option B. Yeah, so I got it in the last moment. It is B. Satya also got the same. Very good. Okay, so Kabasira Kudinir is actually traditional formulation used by Siddha practitioners for managing common respiratory health. It has nothing to do with Niri or Ministry of uh, Environment, etc. etc. It is actually a traditional medical formulation. It is not even you know medical medicinal water. It is a concoction which was used by which is used by the Siddha practitioners. I think you know what Siddha is. You in the Ayush there are you know Ayurveda, Unani, etc. etc. And one of it is Siddha, a traditional medical system. So Kavasara Kudanir is one of the traditional medical medicinal concoctions uh, used by the Siddha practitioners as an ailment for, uh, uh, sorry, as a cure for the respiratory uh, diseases. Statement 2 is correct. In it includes a wide variety of herbs. Okay. And some of it in our ginger, clove, kadukai, ashwain, etc, etc. Plenty of herbs are there. Much more than what is given here. So statement 2 is correct. Answer is option B. 21st question, probably very easy question. World Investment Report is published by which of the following organizations? World Investment Report. Statement, uh, sorry, uh, option A, World Economic Forum. Option B, World Bank. Option C, United Nations uh, Convention on Trade and uh, Development. Option D, Credit Suisse. Yeah, 21. Already I got answers. Okay, very fast, very quick. It is indeed by UNCTA, United Nations Conference on Trade and Development. So, C, correct answer, very good. So all of you are really prepared on current affairs. That's very good to see. Okay. So basically what it does is the world investment report focuses on the trends of foreign direct investment. Okay. Uh, at regional and country levels. And you know, it studies the emerging patterns and all these things. Basically it studies about FDI. And India has been a very favorite, favorable FDI destination 
our prime minister has been to various countries and you know has brought in lots of fdis so there has been a lot of discussions regarding all this so do look into that as well some people say that i mean there are a lot of positives for this fdis but these are not the intended fdis that india want clear some of them are actually targeted and india wants something much more open which india can use in its own way all right there has been discussions and all and i think about two days ago in hindu newspaper there was an article regarding uh, these fdis okay and its situation in india etc etc anyway question 22 bell of faith scheme is a safety project conceived under the community policy scheme of which of the following states bell of faith is a scheme or a safety project conceived under community policing scheme of which among the following states option a tamil nadu option b karnataka option c andhra pradesh option d kerala so four south indian states are given which state uses this particular scheme sona saji going with option d very quickly deepika dadam also d satya d okay so again no need to repeat this again you people are very well rehearsed in current affairs very good well of faith scheme is indeed a scheme that has been done in kerala all right and you know basically it will help elderly citizens attract the attention of their neighbors using a loud remote controlled alarm in emergencies so the elderly people can use this loud alarm bell in order to attract attention from anybody in the neighboring area so that you know immediate help and assistance can be brought to them and it is implemented in kerala since the year 2018 23rd question regarding the asian development bank one it is modeled closely on the world bank and has a similar weighted voting system two its membership is exclusive for asian countries three it is headquartered at beijing china Select the correct statements using the codes given below. All right. The question is about Asian Development Bank. Three statements are given. You are supposed to tell me which of these statements is or are correct. They become quickly going for option A. Others. Satya also. yes very good again option a k1 only so it is actually modeled in close lines with world bank and has similar weighted voting system okay i mean what this what does this weighted voting system means it means the weight of your vote is according to the share or your contribution into the uh, bank's capital okay so that is what a weighted voting system means and it is same for world bank also same system is used for world bank so first statement is correct second is wrong out of the 68 members only 49 are from asia there are other countries like uh, usa australia etc etc which is outside asia clearly third one it is you know headquartered at beijing wrong it is headquartered at manila philippines okay so two and three are incorrect right answer option a one only uh, so 24th question Bandrawats is a native tribe living and primarily seen in which of the following states? Okay, Bandrawats. Option A, Karnataka. Option B, Chhattisgarh. Option C, Charkand. Option D, Uttarakhand. So guys, uh, those who are participating in this quiz, try to calculate your scores also. Okay, try to calculate your scores at the end of it. I have only one more question, so do tabulate them. I think you will get a very good score most of you would have a very high score today so if it is okay for you you can put it in the chat box after the session is over i mean not the live chat session but in the comment section if it is okay with you but let's see satya says it is d uttarakhand bandravats is a community or native tribe of deepika going with c charkhand a slightly difficult question, I think. 
I mean, these, these are the questions that you can't crack. Okay, you can't crack with any kind of logic. You have to know it or so it's done. Either you know the answer or you don't. There is nothing, no other clue from any of the, you know. Correct answer is D. Uttarakhand. Bandravats are a native endangered tribe originating and living in the state of Uttarakhand. They are also known by some other names such as Bandrajis, Vandravats and Vandrajis. And they speak a Tibetan, Tibeto-Burman language known as Ravat. Okay, so this is easy to remember. Their language is named known as Ravat and the tribe is known as Bandravat. Okay, and it is seen in the northern state of Uttarakhand. Final question for the day. Consider the following statements about Interpol. Number one, the International Criminal Police Organization or Interpol is a 194 member intergovernmental organization headquartered in Paris, France. Two, India is not a member of Interpol. Select the correct statements. Final question regarding the International Criminals Police Organization, commonly known by the abbreviation Interpol. Okay, Deepika saying it is very quickly. Again, please do tabulate your marks, your scores. Either you can put it publicly if it's okay with you. Otherwise, you can text me personally also. I believe that many of you will get very close to 20 out of 25, if not more. Based on your performance, welcome Sisindal Devi. Okay, two answers so far, 25 AA. And so what is the correct answer? I think I will say it now. Correct answer is option. Sona Saji saying A. Satya Pandey saying C. Finally, finally. Okay, finally I got a point. Uh, no one got that one correct. It is option D. Okay, I think I have jinxed it. Uh, so the correct answer is option D. It is indeed in France, except it is not in Paris. It is in Lyon. Okay, that is why first statement is wrong. Second is wrong because India is a member. It is saying India is not a member and India is a member since 1949. Alright, so both the given statements are incorrect and the answer is option D. So I will put the uh, PDF of the entire thing in my telegram channel. The link is as shown here. So once again, thank you all for joining and actively participating in this quiz. Day after tomorrow, we will start ancient India series. Okay theory sessions and uh, some you know one main sensor session session will also be there that I will schedule and uh, let you know when it is it will be a small session how to write main answers etc uh, so anyway thank you for joining please like this stream and share with your friends subscribe to my channel and you know, study well so that's it for from me today until next time bye bye